I'm going to take her and have her introduce me wherever I go. <laughs> that would make sense. That's an easy way to get a raise, isn't it, right there? Not everybody has that kind of a forum or a platform either. That was great. That was, that was great. Everybody I know is excited about the season, so give us an overview of where you are right now in terms of what you've accomplished this month and what you're hoping to see tomorrow. Well, certainly, uh, we feel like we had a great training camp. We're prepared our football team to, uh, to start fast. Uh, we're going to play a good race team, 10 win season last year, um, Conference USA champs, uh, very good coaching staff. Coach Bailiff, I, I've known for a number of years, uh, well-coached uh, football team. So a nice, uh, nice football team. Offensively, I thought they did great things. Um, uh, very diverse on the offensive side of the ball and very stingy defensively. So it's going to be a great challenge for our guys. We're looking forward to it, playing at home. Um, again, 2014, excited to kick off the season and get this thing rolling. You are playing what is generally accepted to be the toughest schedule in the country. Um, all kidding aside about, oh, it would be nice if we had some easier teams, but how do you prepare a team for that kind of gauntlet? Because not only do you carry the baggage that everybody always plays their best game against Notre Dame, but you're playing really, really good teams who are going to raise their efforts. Well, we know that. I mean, our guys are prepared for that when they come to Notre Dame. They know the competition is going to be uh, the best in the country. So when they come to Notre Dame and sign that letter of intent, they know what they're getting into. So uh, I, I think we use it as a positive. Uh, you want to come to Notre Dame, you're going to be playing on Broadway. This is not an off-Broadway show. So be ready for the best. You're going to play the best every week. And uh, they've got to be ready for that. So um, I think that's one of the draws in coming to Notre Dame. You're not going to play a week schedule. And uh, Rice is uh, a tough opener for anybody to play uh, in the country. We got a really good question from the audience last night at your radio show at O'Rourke's. Basically, describe this year's team in three words. Yeah, I think the first thing that I said was uh, we were going to be athletic. This is going to be an extremely athletic football team, um, but it's also going to be an inexperienced football team. And I think, uh, you know, with that inexperience, um, you know, we're going to have times uh, where we're going to, you know, pull our hair out a little bit, but we're going to be an exciting team. And, and that's going to be a fun team to watch. Uh, they're going to grow. They're going to get better as the year goes. Uh, but athletic, inexperienced, and exciting, all in one. Uh, it's going to be a fun team. I can't wait to watch them play. Um, it's going to be it's going to be one of those years where you're going to see a lot of young kids out there uh, playing the game, but a lot of really good athletes. And to be fair, folks, you expect young players to make some mistakes. But the upside to that is, you have so much talent on this team. They could catch lightning in a bottle, too. I mean, they could actually go through and not make many mistakes, and who knows sure. what's going to happen then. I don't mind playing young guys as long as they're, you know, look, um, they're experienced um, guys on the team as well. I mean, we're going to have guys that have played a lot of games and had a lot of snaps. They just need to make some plays. They make some plays. They gain some confidence. Those young guys now become, you know, big factors on your football team. So just need to go make some plays early on. And another thing as you watch the process of building this team, it's always a process, is the vast majority, and in no way am I insinuating you look past this year, you don't, but the vast majority of guys who will get a lot of playing time this year will be back next year. Yeah, well, we're going to have right now uh, two seniors on offense and two seniors on defense that are starting for us. So uh, this team you're going to see uh, play on Saturday is going to be around for a little bit. So that's nice to know, too, that all the experience that they're going to be gaining, um, you're going to see them here for quite a few years. The fans here just saw three very impressive young men, walk-ons who really, I mean, we always bring up Rudy, but, but these are guys who, if, even if folks don't see them a lot on Saturday, other than Charlie, they see them with you every 30 seconds, but they play a real role on your team and you rewarded them with scholarships, which is no small reward. Talk about what these guys have contributed and why you do that. Well, it, first of all, you know, they're, they're not handouts. Uh, you know, we don't just give away scholarships. Scholarships are too important. Your program relies heavily on players to, to contribute, and they have to contribute, you know, on the field. They've got to contribute in, in the classroom, and they've got to contribute in the community. And, and the three young men that were up here were all very deserving of that. And so uh, I think, first and foremost, um, they have the respect uh, of their teammates. Uh, they have the respect of their coaching staff, uh, and I think that they've earned the right to represent Notre Dame as a scholarship player, and uh, that means they've done all the little things right. And there's a commitment there. These guys paid for their schooling um, and made a commitment to the Notre Dame 
uh, football program over a number of years, and, and now they've been rewarded for it. And you talk about commitment. I know we, we're honoring our armed forces here and, and what a commitment they make. So I just want to take a moment to, to thank them and our armed forces that are here today for their commitment. So thank you so much for your commitment. And, and when the three leaders of the ROTC programs here on campus were up here, we talked a lot about leadership. And that's something that you emphasize in your program. And you really do have student leaders. You have the Unity Council, and you've just selected a group of four young men to be the captains of this year's team. Yeah, excited about our four captains, Austin Collinsworth, who's a senior. Um, you know, Cam McDaniel, another senior, and then two juniors, uh, Sheldon Day and Nick Martin. You probably remember Nick Martin. Uh, Zach Martin was a two-time captain. Uh, that must uh, run in the family there pretty good, but four really good leaders, two of them are juniors and two of them are seniors, and it was pretty clear that those were the four leaders of our program. But we've got others that are coming as well. We've got some sophomores that are great leaders as well, so we're in pretty good shape when it comes to leadership. You know, here at Notre Dame, Coach, I think we all get a little spoiled by the tremendous support that this program gets. And as you look out here today and as you walked in, some people might have said, well, that luncheon crowd's a little small, but every table is filled. There are 840 people here today at a luncheon that we have every week on Labor Day weekend. And again, Rice a formidable opponent, but it's not the marquee game. And we were thinking, how many schools can have a lunch before every single game and draw on a weekend like this almost 1,000 and usually 1,000 to 2,000 people every single week? Well, again, I, I think it just shows uh, the, the great following, the fan support that Notre Dame has. And, uh, for me, uh, that's what makes Notre Dame such a great place. So you talk about uh, the, the things that Notre Dame represents, but it has one of the greatest fan bases in college football, 81,000. Uh, one of the things that hit me more than anything else is uh, you remember that BYU game last year. I don't know if anybody was at that. Raise your hand if you sat in that BYU game last year. You ought, you ought to get free lunch, first yeah. of all, okay? That's number one. And I, I went into that stadium, just, just to, to, to go off topic here, I went into that stadium and I said, you know what, I don't know if I could sit through this game. <laughs> And, and that entire stadium was full. So my point being is that, you know, we have a lot of great traditions here at Notre Dame. We have a lot of great things that have happened here, uh, but we've got great fans. And, and that hit me more than anything else at that BYU game uh, because it was so cold, and that was 81,000 people uh, cheering us on. And your little bit of humor here does put on a point. This is not free. People pay to be here in addition to it. So, again, we thank you and uh, give them a preview of what they should expect to see on the field tomorrow. You know, we got to be aggressive. Uh, we we got to get off to a good start. I want to get our quarterback going right away. Let's get Everett Golson moving and running and throwing and let him kind of get this offense running. I think that's important. Uh, defensively, uh, let's get him into third down situations and, and get after the quarterback a little bit. I think, I think we need to be aggressive and really force the action early on. We can't sit back and let things happen. So uh, I, I think you'll see an offense and a defense that's going to make some things happen early on. And folks, you should get a chance at the pep rally in front of the Rockney Memorial Gymnasium this afternoon to hear from the Irish football captains. Weather permitting, they'll make that call about a little bit after three, but I've been told it looks pretty good. So, Coach, thank you so much. My good pleasure. luck this weekend. Thank you. Irish head coach Brian Kelly, everybody.